Welcome to Star Wars Planet Explained. Today we will be learning about the complete history of the popular aquatic planet from KOTOR, Manan. Quickly before we get into the video, if you do go on to enjoy this episode, perhaps consider subscribing so you're always up to date with this series. Manan, a planet consisting completely of water, was the second planet of three located in the Pirshak star system and was inhabited mainly by the native Selkath. The first known records of Manan indicate that it was conquered by the Rakuten Infinite Empire, sometime between 35 and 30,000 BBY. The Empire enslaved the Selkath, sending many off-world for slave labour to help expand not only upon the Empire's military might, but to work on a number of their super weapons, including the Starforge. Sadly, all of the slaves who worked on the super weapons were swiftly executed. However, as the Rakuten Empire began to collapse, their dominion over the planet waned, and they eventually abandoned it, allowing Manan and the native Selkath to be released from their enslavement and to prosper on their own. However, the planet's existence was lost for thousands of years, and was only rediscovered at some point between 20,000 BBY and 17,000 BBY during the Republic's Great Manifest period, at which point the planet was introduced into the galactic community. However, the Selkath chose not to join the Growing Republic, and instead chose to have their complete independence after millenniums of enslavement. The planet thrived for thousands of years, becoming one of the most vital planets in the known galaxy, due to being the only one that produced the highly sought after healing liquid known as Kolto. To accommodate for the demand of Kolto, the Selkath built a ginormous structure known as Arto City, one of only two structural landmasses that ever really existed in its entire known history, and it was viewable from space due to its sheer size. Despite being known for its Kolto exports, the planet's history is rather vague up until the Mandalorian Wars, in which the Selkath mainly supplied the Republic. However, several years later, by the time of the Jedi Civil War, the Selkath chose to stay completely neutral and sell to both the Republic and Revan's new Sith Empire, under certain rules and conditions. Both factions couldn't invade the planet, due to the Selkath's willingness to destroy their entire reserve of Kolto if they were attacked, forcing both the Republic and the Empire into dealing with them peacefully, alongside each other. Despite the Sith secretly trying to influence Force-sensitive Selkath youth, a number of Selkath scientists despised the Empire and believed in the Republic, so they built Harakot Station, a secret Kolto harvesting plant inside the Harakot Rift. However, as the Republic began to harvest the Kolto, a Selkath legend, a giant creature known as the Progenitor, was awakened. The Progenitor, using some sort of scream, sent the Selkath inside the station insane, and they killed all of the personnel. The Republic knew nothing about the crisis within the station, and eventually sent a man searching for a star map who was eventually revealed to be the redeemed Revan, down into the rift to investigate why the station went silent. Revan discovered what happened to the station and chose to destroy the Kolto Harvester, which was disturbing the progenitor, and the giant fish allowed Revan entry to the star map. When he returned to the surface, the Selkath put Revan on trial, but were surprised to learn about the truth of the legendary progenitor. They were extremely thankful that Revan spared the beast, but they still took the station away from the Republic. But at the same time, the Sith manipulation of young Force-sensitive Selkath was brought to light, again thanks to Revan, and they were forced to pay for the Republic's exports for two years, otherwise they would be cut off from Kulto. Once the Empire was defeated by a redeemed Revan and the Republic, an order of Force-sensitive Selkath, led by Shassa, who was part of the Sith's secret manipulation plans, were the main force of an uprising within Arto City that drove the remains of the Sith Empire's forces from the planet. Knowing that their neutral status would generally cause conflict, this order, the Order of Shassa, would go on to be the planet's main defence force, and the Selkath then opened Arto City to refugees once the war completely ended. 300 years later, when the Great Galactic War broke out in 3681 BBY, Manan attempted to stay neutral and sell their Kolto to whomever would buy it. 
but the Sith Empire had different ideas. They obliterated Arto City from orbit, forcing the entirety of the Selkath back underwater. They begged the Republic for aid, however, they refused, and the Selkath chose to cut off all connection with the galaxy. They stayed submerged in their cities for around 25 years, returning to their roots and cultures. However, with their economy taking a hit and mounting pressure from both the Republic and delegates from other planets, the Selkath were convinced to begin trading Kulto again. They built a trading platform known as Mercantile Plaza, intending to trade with the Republic only. However, a Selkath ambassador called Shuru opened trading to the Sith Empire too, believing the Republic had betrayed them when they needed them the most, and they didn't want to enrage the Empire any further. However, as the war continued, the Selkath eventually secretly supported the Republic as part of the Rift Alliance, despite still serving the Empire. Meanwhile, in the depth of the ocean, the Order of Shassa was secretly defending a laboratory that was attempting to create super soldiers using ancient Rakuten technology, which was ordered by the Revenites. However, it was infiltrated and destroyed by a Republic Empire coalition. In the years following the war, the Selkath rebuilt Arto City, but Manan's Kolto exports began to decline under mysterious circumstances, and for the next thousand years, Kolto became extremely expensive, and most of the galactic community turned their eyes to Bacta, a now cheaper, more powerful alternative. As time passed, Manan became irrelevant on the galactic stage, and by the time of the new Sith War, at some point during 2 and 1000 BBY, the Selkath almost completely abandoned Arto City, and returned to the depths of their oceans. A few Selkath stayed on the surface to trade with passers-by, but the hyperspace routes to the planet were almost completely forgotten by most, and the Selkath returned to their primitive tribal roots. By the time of the Galactic Empire, despite being largely forgotten, Emperor Palpatine rediscovered routes to Manan, <laughs> and intended on claiming the planet as his own, wanting to discover its historical secrets. The Selkath, who were now primitive unlike their space-bearing ancestors, surrendered to the Empire immediately after their arrival. Despite this, the Empire used depth charges to bomb underwater cities, to assert their dominance and draw any remaining Selkath from hiding. The abandoned Arto City was reinvented into a luxury resort for high-ranking officials, and the Selkath once again were enslaved. The Empire began mass mining the Kolto that was left in the ocean, and as a result the once beautiful blue endless sea was polluted, forcing the Order of Shassa, who was still operating after almost 4,000 years to come out of hiding. Darth Vader who discovered this order of force-sensitive Selkath offered to help overthrow the Imperial forces within Arto City, only if they swore allegiance to him and the Emperor. They agreed, and Vader gave them detailed plans on the Imperial forces stationed within the city. 200 members of the Order of Shassa swept through the city, murdering everything in their path, and the majority were overwhelmed by the dark side, to which Vader convinced them it was a positive thing. Manan was freed from Imperial enslavement, with the Order now serving the Emperor. However, this peace would not last for long, because in 25 ABY, during the war with the Yuzang Vong, Manan was once again under siege, this time by the Aelon Nova Guard, as well as the Vong themselves. This version of Manan's history is considered to be part of Legends, but Manan itself, as well as the Selkath, are officially canon. If you enjoyed this episode on the history of Manan, I'd be grateful if you hit the like button, as well as the subscribe and notification bell, so you're always up to date with this series. Also, if you enjoy my content and feel like I deserve it, perhaps consider checking out my Patreon page and dropping in a few credits here and there that will go a long way in helping expand the channel, and you get to be a direct part of that. I will see you guys in the next episode, but until then, May the Force be with you, always.